Hi, this is Ella Piskorski. I'm the current president of Acre Student Farm at the University of Wyoming. In this episode, it will be on lettuce. Just to sum up our video series, we have been posting a video about a plant you can grow in Laramie for the past five weeks now. This will be the final episode in this season of the series, as it were. Uh, in the future, we will be doing more. It just it's kind of to be determined when that will be. Summary of today, again, like always, it's a description of what it is, how to grow lettuce, how to store and preserve it, how to use it, and a recipe. So a description, um, it's a leafy green. There are two types of lettuce you can grow. There's head lettuce and leaf lettuce. Head lettuce is like what's depicted here in the picture. In the picture, um, it just grows into a head, such as like iceberg lettuce they buy at the store. It's a, he a head of lettuce. There's also leaf lettuce, which doesn't grow into this tight cluster. Um, Varieties include like Black Cedar Simpson, I, that's one we grow at the farm. But leaf lettuce is nice because you can harvest it continuously, whereas head lettuce you usually wait for it to form that head and then you harvest it all at once. So it really depends on what you want to do. At Acres we grow leaf since we sell salad mixes, so it makes more sense for us to grow leaf lettuce so we can harvest it every single week or multiple times a week. But if you're looking for head lettuce, you know that's always op an option. So you can have typically green. There are also purple lettuces, some that are a little bit of both. Uh, their taste depends on what variety you pick, like a lot of vegetables. Um, there are a huge variety of varieties of lettuce. We use, yeah, Black Seeded Simpson and then one other that I cannot remember the name of, of course, right now, but they both definitely grow in Laramie, just if anyone's concerned about what variety to get those, that definitely does work. Um, it's an annual plant, which means it completes its life cycle in one growing season. So how to grow it. This is uh, information for how to do it out in a, like outside. I will also talk about how to grow containers um, next, but this is how to grow it outside. So they're cool season plants, so they prefer cool weather. So you'll wanna sow the seeds before the last frost. Um, personally here in Minnesota, I did that same thing. I sowed mine a few weeks ago when it was, was kind of nice out actually, but then it, you know, like Laramie, we had that another secret winter come by for a little bit and it did freeze, but the, or by little leaves, leaves were fine. They can handle, you know, some slight colds. Uh, they, don't, they don't prefer cold, they prefer cool. So like 50s, 60s, that sort of thing is their kind of ideal. But um, just sow your seeds in advance. You don't want to wait until it's too hot because when it gets hot out, they bolt, which we'll talk about soon. They also prefer shade, but I'm not complete shade, partial shade. Um, it keeps them tasting better longer. So what you can do is you can plant them next to tall crops because you'll have that area of shade where you can't plant a lot of vegetables, but you can plant things like lettuce uh, on, in the shade area. So then you're using up the space that otherwise probably wouldn't do so well. Uh, you can also plant it, say, under, if you have like a yard that's covered by trees, you can do the same thing. You plant it in the shade there. Um, it's a good way to use up uh, space that wouldn't otherwise work. Uh, in Laramie, you got to irrigate it. That's just something that'll have to happen. There's nowhere near enough precipitation. Um, it's something where you can plant and harvest them a lot. Uh, what'll happen? So about bolting is the important thing. So when it gets kind of hot out and it starts to bolt, which basically means it goes to seed, it gets super tall and you can see the seed heads come out. So you want to harvest stuff before then because it starts to get bitter then. So just be aware that you're going to have to plant this and harvest it multiple times. So look at the back of your seed packet and see how long it says it'll take to get to maturity. So then you know, oh, I can plant, you know, two weeks or three weeks in, before this date. So then I know I'll continuously have lettuce throughout the summer. Um, you can uh, cut it dramatically. So like if you have a whole bunch of plants of leaf lettuce, I'm talking about not of head lettuce. Um, you can, you can cut it down to like an inch with it of the soil and it'll come back, it'll be fine. As long as it's not in that bolting stage, then you don't want it anyway. But um, yeah, just be, cut it dramatically, it's gonna be fine. You don't have to be careful with it. It'll, it'll probably be fine. And if it isn't, who cares? It's lettuce, you can grow it again in three weeks anyway. Um, if you wanna save seeds, you can allow some lettuce to bolt and then you can save those seeds. Otherwise, that's really the only situation you'll want it to bolt in. Um, otherwise, you know, make sure you get it out of there beforehand and you replace it with new lettuce. Um, in general, they are susceptible to slugs and snails just because they like their moist environment and the snails just like them. I have not personally seen that in Laramie, probably because it's just too dry, but also we planted ours. It was a bit sunnier in the area where we, where we planted it last year. 
So that may happen if you're in the shade, I'm not sure, but that's definitely a thing. In general, they are susceptible to slugs and snails. So regarding grilling in containers specifically, leaf lettuce does better than head lettuce in containers. Um, you'll want to pick a pot that's, I've heard, 6 to 12 inches big. And you'll, you need to use potting soil. That's really important. So soil that just from the outside is nowhere near, is not adapted, as it were, to containers. Um, potting soil specifically made so that it has good drainage, a good air holding capacity. And, you know, in out in your yard, it wouldn't really matter about the drainage potential, but it matters in this little tiny pot. So, and also uh, there's an issue with pathogens and just things may grow that you don't want them to grow, but it's important to use potting soil. You can use soil from outside, but I don't recommend it. Um, it's important that your pot, whatever you choose, has adequate drainage because you don't want the roots to get too soggy. This is especially important because you're gonna be watering it pretty often. You water a small amount, you know, a lot. So as opposed to succulents where you're gonna uh, use a large amount, like completely soak it and they'll wait a few weeks. It's like the opposite of what you're gonna do with lettuce. You're just gonna like, you know, get it wet and then do that like every day or something, depending on what it looks like. And as always with growing a container, especially because this likes a moisture environment, fungus gnats are possible. So you have to be prepared for that. Um, personally, I use those little, I think they're white fly traps, they're yellow from the uh, hardware store or where have you. Uh, you can make the little flags out of them and stick them into the soil, like with a, some random stick you find outside. You can just uh, zip tie it around that or something. Um, also, I do use a mild pesticide that's um, okay for vegetables. I don't use it obviously right before I harvest, but in general, I'm fine with that. But uh, there are also uh, things that don't use like a purchased product that are more natural, as it were. Uh, that you can use to try to get rid of your fungus gnats. So if you see a bunch of little gnats flying around your containers, that's what they are. Uh, they're not fruit flies exactly. They're close enough, but you know, they're not really that related. Okay, in terms of storing and preserving, um, you probably are just going to put it in the fridge, but you can freeze it, though, like a lot of things, it will get mushy. Uh, you can dry it, you can ferment it, but what you're probably going to do is just store, the, store it in the fridge. Um, don't wash it if you don't have to because it will stay better longer. Just wash it right before you use it instead. But if it's incredibly dirty, you know, you can just be prepared to use it a little bit sooner. How to use it. So a little nutritional information. It's mostly water and fiber, which is perfectly fine. You know, clean yourself out. It doesn't have many calories in it, which is why it's so popular. You can use it in a lot of things, um, famously salads and wraps and, you know, shredded lettuce and tacos and little, some leaves on your sandwiches and, you know, grind it up in your weird smoothie or stick it in some soup. Uh, you can grill it. But the thing is, so I learned from Gordon Ramsay, what you got to do is you have to cut off the ends of it because otherwise you're not going to be able to clean it properly because he was once served just a whole head of grilled lettuce and he was disgusted like he is by everything. Um, also, when you finish using it, if it does have that end on the, um, if you have like a head of lettuce and it has that end where the stem is, you can stick and use it to grow more lettuce. Um, you can look up instructions for how to do that online. That's definitely an opportunity if you want to try, maybe not growing something for seed, but you don't want it to buy something, you can just try to reuse your stuff and try your hand at that. Really simple little idea here for you is a lettuce wrap. You can see in the picture, you literally use the lettuce as the, what would normally be um, like a tortilla or something, and just put your stuff in there and wrap it up as you wish. You know, you can put whatever you want in it. Um, here, it looks like chicken and some vegetables, I would say. But it's definitely, it's a very low calorie way of uh, switching out your tortillas or what have you for something else. Okay, and that wraps up our little episode on lettuce here. It's something really simple to grow. Um, I would say if you're kind of concerned about your gardening uh, capabilities, you can try it out. If it doesn't work, you know, sometimes things don't work and it's, it's something that's pretty quick and easy. So it should be okay. And it's not like it's expensive either to buy a packet of seeds. And, it, you know, um, you won't waste a lot of time on it. Uh, in terms of our next episode, it's to be determined when that'll come out, but we will have this series, to the best of my knowledge, on preserving things. We'll have like different episodes instead of, of being about um, 
different ways of preserving things like canning and dehydrating and all sorts of things. Um, it'll be presented by Denise Smith from Extension and we'll be, we'll let everyone know when we're going to be putting those out. If you have any questions about lettuce or other gardening things or anything, uh, you can comment them on YouTube if that's where you're watching this or you can email us at udubstudentfarm at gmail.com. Um, thank you for watching and have a great week.